The Realme 3, a Helio P70 processor, dual cameras, a nice build, and a 4230 mAh battery, all for 9,000 rupees. Worth it? Well, let's find out. Hey guys, Ash here from C4E Tech, and let's get started. If you do end up liking this video, please don't forget to turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon. As always, let's start with the build. Now, if you love a phone that stands out, then you're gonna really like the Realme 3. There's a gradient pattern to the back and it shimmers quite nicely in the sun. Picking it up though, you'd quickly realize just how big of a fingerprint and smudge magnet this plastic back is. Not to mention the fact that despite being plastic, it is just as slippery as the glass back of the Redmi Note 7. I'm just glad that Realme includes a protective case with this one. Now, one benefit of plastic though is the weight. At 175 grams, the Realme 3 is lighter than the competition. It feels nice in hand too. Despite cramming in a 6.2 inch screen, Realme has managed to keep the bezels narrow enough that the phone still feels okay for one handed use. Now, speaking of the display, we have a 19 by 9 panel here. The resolution is HD, and there is a dewdrop notch up top. Realme is offering Gorilla Glass for added protection. When it comes to the quality of this panel itself, the colors are good, the viewing angles are also excellent, and even the brightness levels are acceptable. As far as the drop in resolution, well, it is a negative, I really wish they'd gone with Full HD, but as far as HD panels go, this is a good one. So that's that. That said, surfing Facebook or typing a message on Twitter all seem fine. If you aren't an avid reader, you probably won't notice the loss in sharpness when it comes to text on screen. What you would notice though would be the drop in quality of the Netflix streams. The lack of Widevine L1 coupled with a lower resolution display meant that we didn't quite enjoy our binge sessions with the Realme 3. Now moving on to the other aspect of media experience, we have a single downward firing speaker that does get quite loud. The sound through the 3.5mm headphone jack, it's decent as well. Call quality is excellent and we got dual volt T on both our SIM cards. The last bit, that's thanks to the Helio P70 the chip inside the Realme 3. It's a pretty great performer when it comes to day-to-day -day tasks. Opening up apps, quick switching, even multitasking on the device felt smooth. On the memory front, we've got three or four gigs of RAM coupled with 32 or 64 gigs of internal storage with the dedicated micro SD card slot providing room for added storage capacity. Now, when it comes to benchmark scores, the Realme 3 might not be as impressive as the Snapdragon 660 on the Redmi Note 7, but the only place where I kind of felt the P70 struggle a bit was during extended gaming sessions. A few races in, I felt like Asphalt 9 was dropping the occasional frame here and there. But even then, the combination of game space and the Mali G72 MP3 GPU meant that the game remained entirely playable. Speaking of game space, we have the new ColorOS 6 based on Android 9 Pie here, and I'm really impressed with the software optimizations that Realme has managed to pull off. The 4230mAh battery also lasted us well over a day. In fact, we ended most days with over 30% left in the tank, regardless of how much we push the phone. So if you're a light user, the Realme 3 can extend well into the second day before it needs to be charged again. Excellent battery life, no complaints here. The only con worth pointing out here is that Realme is still using a micro USB port while most of the competition like Samsung and Redmi have already moved on to the Type-C standard. So circling back to software for a bit, we have the new look Color OS 6 here, the notification shade has gone through an overhaul and we even get an app drawer. What really impressed me was how fast and fluid Color OS 6 felt, especially the face unlock. It's lightning quick, the rear mounted fingerprint scanner too was really fast and accurate. Now there's a ton of new functionality baked in but I'm not gonna really talk about them since we've done a dedicated video on Color OS 6's new functionality. I'm just gonna leave a card to it here, check it out if you wanna know all about the new features that Color OS 6 brings to the table. So what we are gonna talk about next here is the cameras. We've got a 13 megapixel primary sensor to the back along with a two megapixel depth sensor. Under bright light, we have some very good looking shots. The colors look natural. And if you zoom in, you can see a good bit of detail. The dynamic range though is what impressed us the most. It is better than even the Redmi Note 7. And thanks to the wide f1.8 aperture lens, you even get a good bit of natural bokeh or blurring out of the background. You also have chroma boost in here, which, is, which just cranks up the saturation and the dynamic range of an image. Sometimes you get really good looking shots like this. Other times it kind of ends up looking unnatural like this. Moving on to low light, the Realme 3 struggles a bit here. 
colors appear washed out and the details are missing. Turn on Nightscape and everything changes. We immediately get a lot of the details back and there is a lot less noise in the images. Heck, it even managed to beat out both Gcam as well as Night Mode on the Redmi Note 7. So pretty impressive low light performance here. Of course, on the video side of things, we have 1080p 30fps on the Realme 3, that's the max. The colors and dynamic range all look good, decent detail levels too. We also have EIS in here, which means the resulting footage is quite stable. Moving on to portraits, the rear camera does well again, edge reduction is on point and the skin tones look natural. Onto the 13 megapixel selfies, we have a good amount of detail in these shots, skin tones once again natural. Even the selfie portraits turned out quite nice. Realme has done a good job with regards to edge reduction. The software, it's pretty minimal. You have your regular splattering of AI modes, including AI scene detection. There's even a pretty fleshed out expert mode for those who'd want to tinker around with those settings. Overall, the Realme 3 has a really impressive camera package. It manages to outdo even the Note 7 in certain situations and is quite the force to be reckoned with in the under 10K price bracket. And now, Let's talk price. Now, it has to be one of the most impressive features of the Realme 3. Starting at 9,000 rupees for the base variant, the Realme 3 is priced 1,000 rupees lesser than the Redmi Note 7. It's even cheaper than the Max Pro M2. So, it is one of the strongest offerings in this segment. But should you buy one? Well, if you wanted a powerful phone with striking looks, a dedicated micro SD card slot, and a really impressive set of cameras, all under the 9K budget, the Realme 3 is a surprisingly well-rounded offering. If you are able to stretch your budget by a bit, the Zenfone Max Pro M2 and the Redmi Note 7 are worth looking into. The under 10K segment has so many great options right now. Now, as buyers, we have a lot of choices. Which is your pick? Let me know in the comments below. Now, I've already done a detailed comparison with the Redmi Note 7. I'll leave a card to that here. Now, is there anything else you'd want me to compare this with? Let me know in the comments below and I'll try to get that done. So basically my pick over here is if you're really on a tight budget and you want to really stick to the 9K segment, you don't want to spend more, the Realme 3 is a good enough offering. But if you're okay going up to 10, then maybe the Zenfone Max, Max Pro M2 because of the stock Android and the 660, it just has a little bit of a, a smoother experience because of stock Android. It might be something you might want to look into. Uh, but from the optics perspective, it's again going to be the Realme 3. Uh, so it again depends on what is it that you want. So let me know uh, what's your pick in the segment. And while you're down there, go ahead, hit the thumbs up or thumbs down button, depending on whatever you felt about this video. Also turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon after you hit that subscribe button if you haven't done that yet. Uh, and if you have not checked out either of these videos, go ahead, do that. Or if you've not checked out our other channel, FTJ, do that. And I guess that's it. Thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, my name's Ash. You've been watching C4 Retech. And I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.